Hi, and welcome back. In this quick start lesson, you'll learn how to toggle play and pause buttons using conditions in Protopie. Protopie prides itself as a no-code tool, and conditions are a powerful feature that helps blur the line between coding and design. Whatever your use case is, forms, checkboxes, radio buttons, input fields, the ability to set logic in Protopie is a major piece to the puzzle of making functional prototypes that go beyond visual expression. What you can create with Protopie can and will be very close to the final product. If you like the sound of that, then let's begin. Open Protopie Studio with our starting pie. Let's see first what we've got here. Notice how the song plays as soon as it loads? Go to our sound file for inspection. This is because play automatically is checked. We cover in depth how to work with media objects in a previous lesson. Be sure to check it out. In this demo, what we'd like to do is toggle the play button here so it plays, pauses, and resumes sound playing. This would work exactly the same way for video if you're wondering, so follow along. Add a tap trigger to the group play pause. So we want to either play or pause music. To do so, Protopie must decide which event to fire. When we tap the button, the sound playing is paused, and the button icon must change from pause to play. And when we resume playback, the icon must change from play back to pause. We'll achieve this by simply manipulating their opacities. Go ahead and expand play pause. You'll see the layer groups named play and another named pause which we'll utilize to make the interaction work. Under the tap trigger, add a condition. Whenever we want Protopie to make a decision, we use a condition. As the name implies, conditions set up the parameters that must be satisfied for the response to be activated. It's divided into three parts, the object, its properties, and the parameters. For our first condition, let's work on play as our object. Then select Opacity as Property. Moving on below, you'll see a bunch of icons. These are called Operators, where we'll be setting our parameters. Choose Equal To. Next, we'll need to decide where we'll compare our Opacity property against. For our case, we'll use its value. Set it to zero. Now if you take a look at the condition piece we just created, it says Opacity of Play is equal to zero. Pro tip! Rename your conditions to the corresponding parameters to know exactly what they're for. Let's set it to if the music is playing. Next, add a playback response to the audio file and set the action to pause. Lastly, add opacity responses to each group. This part is important as it completes our interaction. Set opacity of play to 100. and pause to zero. Also, rename them accordingly. This tells Protopie if the music is playing, then tapping on the button will pause the music. And simultaneously, the pause icon is hidden and the play icon shows up. Shall we preview? It works! Now let's do the same for when the music is paused. Another pro tip, select the condition piece and duplicate. This saves us time because not only it duplicates the condition, it also duplicates all the responses underneath, leaving us with only having to customize them. Rename to if the music is paused. This time, configure the second condition to be opacity of play is equal to 100. Set the playback action to play. Then, customize the responses underneath using opposite values. What we just did tells Protopie, if the music is paused, then tapping the button will resume the sound playing. The play icon goes hidden, and the pause icon shows up. We're all done. Let's preview one last time. Play. Pause, resume. You now know how to toggle in between states and in real time simply by using conditions. 
one step closer to making dynamic prototypes that feel like the real thing. See you in the next one.